Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, I'm Mike, this is Ink Dependence, and this is Linen Toolbar's Hobe, or Hobi? I actually don't know how to say that. Uh, this is an ink from Taiwan, this is Linen Toolbar, and it's probably only my second Linen Toolbar that I've used, and I've really loved both of them that I have, um, that I've used. The other one is Atmospheric Twilight, which is my favorite gray. Go check that one out. I've already made a video on that, I believe. On the back, turn love into ink, uh, 30 mils, Linen Toolbar, and that's about, that's all the, that's all the, uh, the English on here, I, I don't, I don't know what the rest of this says, but I hope it's, I hope it's good. Uh, on the bottom, this was fourteen ninety five at the Kinokunya that we got it from in L.A. Part of the reason that I got this ink was actually that Audrey and I were in L.A. in uh, November, I guess, to see a BTS show. We're both big BTS fans, and there is uh, a member of BTS whose name is Hobie, and so this is H-O-B-E, which is close enough. And I'm like, yes, getting a Hobie ink, going to go see Hobie do some dancing and singing. So uh, this is what the ink bottle looks like inside of there. I do like that they have this nice representative ink splotch and swatch on all of these things. It is very helpful, and uh, this is a, these are good little bottles. I uh, I like the I like the glass. I think it's classy looking. It's got a good cap to it. Let's get inside here. As you can see there, nice uh, nice rubbery uh, inner cap there that doesn't stick to the top of your bottle. I hate when those plastic ones just stick to the top of the bottle. That always sucks. This is a dye-based ink and not one of their pigmented inks. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a little bit different from my Atmospheric Twilight that I love so much. Let's go ahead and look at uh, this on some paper. Here it is on Rhodia 80 grams per square meter. This is my usual paper for ink reviews. As you can see, this is a beautiful blue. It's kind of got that dusty, dusky sort of uh, shade look that uh, I, I really like and my wife Audrey is really into as well this is a this is a good ink for both of us you do get some mild shading here on this paper in general though you're not gonna get a huge amount of shading with this ink it's just kind of got this nice uh, this nice sort of I don't know, dusty character to it. The flow is really good. I haven't had any problems with the flow on this. It doesn't feel wet. It doesn't feel dry. It feels perfectly well behaved. And I've been using it in this 580 ALR for quite, I don't know, since I've gotten it, I guess. I kind of I kind of never took it out of this pen. I, I love it in here so much. This is a medium nib on this pen. You can actually see there is a little bit of, you can see there's a little bit of shimmer left over. I don't know what ink I had in this before I put... Uh, Hove in here, but it left a little bit of shimmer behind somehow and every once in a while I'll get a little bit of shimmer in my writing that is not from this ink that is from another ink Even my my epic cleaning didn't get all of the shimmer somehow But it flows perfectly in this pen and uh, I really like how it matches with the Prussian blue Sometimes I like to match inks. This is not a perfect match But like it gives me an idea what's in the pen and that's good enough for Mike. All right uh, Now on copy paper. It is really good on copy paper, too So this is my usual staples 20 pounds 30% recycled copy paper, which is the worst stuff you're going to find in your office for, you know, office printing or whatever. You don't really see any sh any shimmer. <laughs> Goodness, you're not going to see any shimmer. Should you see shimmer? No, I don't see any shimmer. You're not going to see any uh, spread or feathering or anything like that here. Although, well, I take it back. There's a little bit right here in that eye when you look really closely, but... From, uh, you know, casual observance, you don't really see any of that. And also, barely anything coming through the other side, which is really good. This is a medium nib, and it is not a dry ink. And yet, you only get a few little spots of bleed through on this terrible copy paper. Some show through, but whatever, you're going to get some of that. So, extremely well behaved ink, which is a thing that I really like. Plus, you get a really good character on here. Although, as I said before, you're not going to really see any shading. There's a tiny bit of shading on this paper, but it sucks it up too fast for you to get really any shading of any kind. So, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this a little bit more closely here uh, and uh, uh, do a little water test. Test. We'll do a little uh, chromatography. We'll look at some similar inks. You know the jam. Right. So I have it listed here as 15 to 20 bucks in a 30 mil bottle. Uh, that's because in most places it's going to be somewhere closer to $20. I uh, just had a really good deal on it at this place in LA, this walk-in store. So uh, that, that was really another reason to get it. I'm going to shake and shimmy this around. Blot it up. I do need to get some more of these linen toolbar inks. As I said, I've only got two, maybe three of them, but I've liked them all so far. Some of them can be fairly light and undersaturated, but these have been very good. Okay. All right, so does it have any water resistance? I mean, not a lot. It's not gonna look like, it's, 
I wouldn't say it's water resistant, but you'll have a little bit left over if you spill your glass of water or your coffee on it. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then here's the chromatography for this ink, which uh, you can see it has a little bit of sparkles at the bottom. Uh, those are not from this ink, once again. But most of the blue kind of comes up to, kind of flows up the strip, but it does leave a fair amount behind. Definitely enough to read your work afterwards, although you'll want to recopy it. It's interesting to me how it kind of like went up the little strip here in fits and starts. Like some of it gets leave left behind in various places. It came out to be a really interesting chromatography, even though it's pretty much just got blue in it. What color is this ink? It's blue. <laughs> All right. First up, here's my currently inked Inky Fingers notebook. You can, some, you can find these maybe still at Van S. Pens. This is a wheat straw paper, and I really like the organization in these. Uh, this is Linen Toolbar's Hobie. Hobie, Hobie here. And uh, it looks great on this paper. You get a little bit more shading. You get some like darker shading here in the ends and where you know you have these letters like A where they kind of flow together. Uh, but really cool color on here. Definitely usable enough or dark enough to be usable, which is something that I like in a good blue ink. Then here in my, uh, uh, this is my Tomoe River ink journal, which has been finished. Uh, here it is right there. I've had it sitting here since December and I've refilled it at least twice uh, since then because I, I like this pen and this ink quite a lot and they're great together. So a little bit, uh, a little bit darker here, a little bit more shading. Interesting color action going on there. All right. Now, some similar inks. There's my linen toolbar on a Colodex card, which is what most of my uh, ink collection is on these days. There's my little writing sample on the back here. Get that nice dusty, dusky look to it. Then uh, here we have Robert Oster's Cities of Australia, Sydney, which I got from a friend, Kimberly, which is fairly close, although more green, I think, and less dark. You get some like definite green bits in the middle here that you're missing in Hobe. Then here, Athena Eternal Blue by Marzen, which, man, this is super good. This is a great ink. I love this blue-black. Oh, it's the blue-black. I don't know. It's kind of just dark, dark blue. But you do get more um, like a bit of sheen in this that you don't get in the Linen Toolbar ink. But nonetheless, if you find this um, for a good price, I say get it. I bought this from my friend Tammy, who is amazing. Then here we have uh, Vinta... Lucia, who, uh, which I also got from Kimberly, which is, again, I think more green. It's more like, I don't know, more like a C than Hobe is. And here we have Ackerman number seven, Koning in a Blau, Koning in a Knock Blau, which is more of a blue black, I guess. It's definitely, I don't know, it's got some other character, like it's got a gray tinge to it that you don't get here. And then lastly, Sailor's Soboku, which is a pigmented ink. Uh, and it's more of a blue, I mean, this is the blue-black. It's the mix of their blue and black inks, I believe. And it's, I mean, it's not super close. I thought it was actually closer when I was pulling these. Sometimes you get under the bright light, it's a little bit different. So, yeah, I don't have anything exactly like this. I think probably this one's the closest, I suppose. I don't know. It's it's kind of in a space that's, uh, that's difficult to nail down, but I don't think I have anything exactly like this, and that's why it's been living in a pen uh, for so long. So, grab yourself... A bottle of this cool linen toolbar ink if you get a chance and uh, let me know what your favorite linen toolbars are what do i absolutely need to see from this line hit me up in the comments i'll see y'all in another video peace out hello folks welcome to ink dependence i'm mike and this whoop.